Uh, Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin now is speaking about protests that are planned in the area. Let's listen in. of Seattle and our businesses and activities. But first, I would like to address the killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis. I cannot begin to imagine the deep grief and suffering that his family and loved ones are feeling. My heart and my tears go out to them. And I pray they get the support they need to make it through these dark days. Their grief, anger, and despair is shared by so many. The degrading and brutal way in which Mr. Floyd was treated reflected the deep and systemic impacts of racism in our country, particularly against black Americans. The video of his last words, I can't breathe, echoes through and is magnified by the dark history of our country from slavery to today. The most fundamental duty of our public safety officials is to protect the lives of residents and uphold the law. The similarity to Eric Gardner's case is almost too much to bear. After six years, it is unfathomable they would see the same tragic ending for another unarmed African American forcing out those words, I can't breathe, as they lose their life at the hands of police. The officers that encountered George Floyd disregarded his humanity, which led to his death. As a former federal prosecutor, I believe it is right that the officer was charged and will be prosecuted for killing Mr. Floyd. Those standing by and failing to stop the action should also bear responsibility. In addition, I believe this should lead to an investigation by the United States Department of Justice. Only by these types of interventions and prosecutions in every instance of injustice will we see this type of violence end. Because what we should all know by now is that racism fundamentally, at its core, is a denial of our common humanity. It gives permission to discrimination and to violence. To truly put an end to systemic racism, we must admit and acknowledge that it exists and we must admit of its roots in our history. For it said that denial, denial is the lifeblood and heartbeat of racism. We must admit and acknowledge the systemic and insidious ways in which communities of color are locked out and left behind by every system of our government, from education to health care, from criminal justice to banking and housing. We have seen these inequities deeply in the impacts of COVID-19. It is on all of us to demand better of ourselves, our leaders, and those who are charged with protecting the public peace. I am so thankful for the leadership of Chief Carmen Best, and I know her deep commitment to true community policing and to a culture of continuous improvement. I am similarly thankful for the leadership of Chief Harold Scoggins, who knows that public safety means public life protection. I also know that the men and women of the Seattle Police Department who are speaking out against this injustice and who want to be held to the highest possible standards of our community speak for the department. I'm proud of the significant work that SPD has done to reform its practices. But we must continue to improve SPD and build upon the significant improvements gained in recent years under the consent decree. Among these is to continue to work on the racial disparities we see in criminal justice system and to continue the deep work with the community to build trust. I understand the pain and frustration that the community is feeling again. Tomorrow, people will join in Seattle to grieve, to protest, and to commit themselves to the cause of justice. 
We honor and cherish these rights. They make us better as a city and as a nation. I urge those of you who plan to take part to exercise your democratically earned and hard fought rights to do so peacefully, to speak out against injustice, but to do so peacefully. We must also remember that we are still in the midst of a pandemic that has been particularly harsh on our communities of color. When you come, we need people to be safe and healthy. Please try to remain six feet apart. Follow COVID-19 precautions like face coverings. But know as a city we are stronger when we come together to solve our most difficult challenges, to grieve together, to strive for justice together. I want to turn it over to Chief Best for a few remarks on what she expects of her officers. I also want Chief Scoggins to make a few remarks as he's been leading our city's response to COVID-19 and also preparing for this weekend's events. After that, I'll make some remarks about the safe start and we'll take a few questions. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Well, let me start by just thanking the mayor for those wonderful words of encouragement, her great leadership, her kindness and her empathy and her love for this city. I am so appreciative just to hear our leaders stepping forward the way that she has today. A few days ago, we all watched the tragic murder of George Floyd. We heard Mr. Floyd repeatedly call for help. We heard him yell over and over again, I can't breathe. What really bothers me about this more than anything is everyone there, all the officers, showed a grave indifference to life. It was heartbreaking, upsetting, infuriating, and extremely disappointing to see this. And although it happened in Minneapolis, our own community mourns greatly for George Floyd's death. I am here to assure you that the Seattle Police Department is committed to protecting the life and the safety of everyone in this city. We believe in the sanctity of life, and we're going to continue our work to work through the grieving process of George Floyd's death. The Seattle Police Department supports people's rights to express their, their constitutionally protected free speech, and as we come together tomorrow and in the days ahead to rally behind our common cause, I implore everyone, should they choose to participate in the rallies and the demonstrations, to remain calm and peaceful and respectful. This should be a time for healing and a time for creating the dialogue about how our community can move forward together. We are all in this together. The department will facilitate peaceful protests as necessary. And while we empathize with every single person who is suffering under the death of George, uh, of, of Mr. George Floyd, we also want to make sure that we are obeying the laws, that we're not hurting other people, we're not committing violent crime, and we're not destroying property. This is our community, this is our city, and this is our home. Thank you. Hello, my name is Harold Scoggins, Fire Chief of the Seattle Fire Department. I wanna echo Chief Bess and thank Mayor Durkin and Chief Bess for their leadership and their partnership as we go through many challenging times. I also wanna acknowledge all of our cabinet peers who've been working extremely hard over the last three months to support community during a very difficult time. The tragic death of George Floyd can be felt across the nation, including here at home in Seattle. We are all grieving as a community about this terrible incident that occurred in Minneapolis. As your fire chief, as an African-American male, I understand the need to speak out about what is right. As the mayor and the police chief have said, this was wrong, plain and simple. As we all read and watch the news stories about what is occurring in Minneapolis and around the nation, it brings up many emotions for us and for me 
individually. People are in outrage about this incident, and they should be. We hope people express their constitutionally protected free speech rights peacefully. Our firefighters are committed to keeping the community safe, and we hope you will help others stay safe too. For those of you who are participating in rallies and protests, I respectfully ask that you continue to maintain physical distancing. We are still in the middle of a pandemic and need to follow recommendations for stopping the spread of COVID-19. While we hope it is not needed, we have a plan in place for responding to fire and medical emergencies during protests. We will be closely monitoring the protests and, and are tied in closely with the city's emergency operations center. We can upscale our resources if necessary with reserve apparatus and additional staffing. I also have a duty to keep my firefighters safe. We hope that no one will intentionally try to start fires or injure others during these protests. As you are aware, fires are extremely hazardous and can spread rapidly. With unintended To receptacles and move them away from buildings if you can. If you see a fire occurring, call 911 immediately to report it, and please do not assume someone else has already done it. We also will be upscaling our response for medical emergencies by sitting an additional unit with the fire responding crew. This will occur if a 911 call is for an emergency near or at a protest location. Stay safe and stay healthy, Seattle, and know that the Seattle Fire Department will be there if you need us. And we know we are all in this together. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Scoggins and Chief Best. And I just wanna emphasize that by giving these remarks, none of us expect that things will become violent or out of hand, but we have to know watching across the country about the possibility. And we urge people, we understand the need to come downtown, the need to be together, the need to express both grief and anger and frustration together, but please do it safely. Um, please do it respectfully. And now I would like to turn and talk about uh, the governor's order today on stay home, stay healthy. Um, earlier this afternoon, Governor Inslee announced that all counties in Washington state are eligible to apply for a modified phase one starting Monday. Shortly after that, and just moments ago, King County Executive uh, Dow Constantine and I, <clears throat> excuse me, Dow Constantine and I have been in close consultation and as he has announced, on Monday, King County will apply for a modified phase one stage. Over the last 12 weeks, Seattle has been a model for the rest of the country in how we flatten the curve, save lives, and protect our healthcare workers. We needed to protect our healthcare system from becoming overwhelmed. Our region had been the epicenter of the pandemic. Washington state has led the way for the nation. Because of the efforts of our residents and our businesses, we have significantly reduced COVID-19. We did it before many places in the country and had no playbook. We relied on the people and residents of Washington State, King County, and Seattle to take actions against their own interests sometimes to protect each other. As we are nearing targets in, on testing and cases, I believe that Seattle and King County are ready to enter a modified phase one approach to reopening additional businesses. But we must continue to follow public health guidance. I want to emphasize that applying for a modified phase one doesn't mean we're out of the woods. COVID has not left our communities and this is far from over. This is far from over. This virus knows no boundaries and its resurgence can happen quickly, exponentially, and we all have to do our part still to practice good health safety measures. As we begin to reopen our society and our economy, businesses and cultural institutions, we can't relax 
all of the restrictions simultaneously. During this time, we need residents to continue to wear face coverings, practice good hygiene, and remain six feet apart. Remember, the only way the virus can spread is if someone with the virus comes in contact with someone who doesn't have it. The good news is we've done such a good job of flattening the curve that as many as 95% of the residents of Seattle and King County were never exposed to the virus. The bad news is that means 95% of us are susceptible to the virus. So as we come together, we give the virus the opportunity to spread again. Our adherence to public health guidelines will help ensure we continue to see decreases of COVID-19 infections, transmissions, and deaths. Our choices not only help determine when and how we reopen, they save lives. They save our healthcare system. And we should do it for those healthcare workers who work so selflessly around the clock in terrible conditions, sometimes without the protective gear they needed to save our community. Our city's role is to prioritize the most vulnerable and help bridge the gaps. As we begin to reopen, we need to support our residents and businesses with an emphasis on those that are most vulnerable. We will continue to work closely with our partners at Public Health, Seattle King County, to ensure our small and mid-sized businesses owners have the resources they need to reopen successfully and meet the needs of their customers and employees. The businesses and their employees have to be safe and their patrons have to be safe. We are taking control of our own procurement of PPE and critical testing materials to manage the impact of COVID-19. And as one of the region's largest employers, we will lead by example and follow the public health guidelines related to our facilities, our operations, and our 12,000 city workers. For example, the city just extended our work from home policies until Labor Day. I know that many of our business owners and residents have questions about what the state's guidance means for them, their businesses, and their lives. We'll continue to give you as much information as we can as soon as we have it and make it accessible in many languages over many platforms. I appreciate our residents' patience, their compassion, and collaboration as we navigate this really unprecedented time together. With that, I'll be happy to take some questions to myself or to either of the we have been listening, we've been listening to Mayor Jenny Durkin talking about uh, plans for reopening the state, the governor's announcement today, uh, and being diligent about staying safe. We're going to talk more about that in just a moment. Most of that news conference was focused on the death of George Floyd, the black man who died in police custody on Monday in Minneapolis. She expressed heartbreak for the Floyd family, saying their grief and despair is shared by so many. What the officers did to Floyd showed disregard for humanity. As a prosecutor, She'd like to see uh, the officers not just charged and prosecuted, but also an investigation by the DOJ. And from the police chief, Carmen Best, what she said really bothered her was that all of the officers, quote, showed a grave indifference to life. The fire chief, Harold Scoggins, said as the chief and as an African-American male, he understands the need to speak out about what's right. And this was, quoting, wrong, plain and simple. About tomorrow's protests, the mayor and the police chief and the fire chief all urge people to exercise their right to speak out against injustice peacefully, to obey the laws, to socially distance, to wear face coverings. And the mayor also said, I want to add this one more point, that while she's proud of the Seattle Police Department, she says it must continue to improve focusing on racial disparities in the criminal justice system and continuing to work to build trust. We have more on all of that coming up because King 5 News at 5 starts right now.